Hey folks, Pete here. Before we check out Reflector 4, because you're one of the first people to watch this video, if you use the code you're seeing at the bottom of your screen right now, that's Studio Live at checkout, you're going to save yourself 20% off. It's only for the first 100 people who download Reflector 4. Now, on with the review. In this video, we're taking a look at Reflector 4, which is a screen mirroring app for Android, iOS, PC, Mac, it does it all. Let's dive in and take a look. So what is Reflector and why would you use it? Well, Reflector allows you to send your iPhone, your iPad, and even your Android device screens to your PC or your Mac using AirPlay, Google Cast, or Miracast. And you can do this without the hassle of cables or dongles. You're just using your own Wi-Fi network. Now I've been using Reflector for several years, right back from version two and through version three. And I must say that version four, the improvements that have been made here in terms of the performance, in terms of the visualization, and some of the options are very cool indeed. Let's jump in and take a look at how it all works. Now Reflector works on PCs and Macs and even the new Mac M1, which is what I'm using it on right here. And once you install the software, you'll see this is the interface you get. We can come in here, take a look at all the different settings, but just out of the box, it will set it up here, ready to receive your iPhones, your iPads, and your Android devices. Let's show you how we do that. So with the software running, all we need to do is swipe down from the top corner or from the bottom on some devices here in iOS, tap on screen mirroring, and then tap on the name of the device. Now by default, there'll be an AirPlay code that you'll just need to enter into your device. And right away, we're immediately connected and can start displaying our iPhone screen. So you can go ahead and use Reflector 4 without changing any of the settings, but if you do want to tweak things, down the bottom here, there is a settings option. We can click on that one, and you've got a bunch of settings here. We can either change the frame of our iPhone 12, if I wanted to say pretend I had a gold one instead, we can do that there, or we can actually turn off the frame entirely. You can also change the way the screen scales here. You can fill the screen as we're doing here, or use a default size. Your rotation, so when you're rotating your device, you can ensure that it stays in the right rotation. It doesn't flip it around. Otherwise, it will automatically do that when you're going from portrait to landscape. And you can also choose if it's always on top or in full screen mode here. I'm going to put the frame back on because I kind of like it. So we'll pop the frame back on my graphite one. There we go. And uh, let's just adjust the size slightly so that we can fit it all here within our screen. As soon as we go off there, the menu goes away. So if we're displaying this like I do here with some screen recording or with some live streaming, we can get that looking the best it possibly can. Another cool thing we can do is actually have multiple devices. So if I do the same thing here and screen mirror from my iPad, it will pop up and connect this one as well. There you go. Once again, we get our code here. We pump in the code and hit the enter button there. And our iPad screen is now going to come up and join our iPhone screen. A couple of seconds later, we've got both of them here displayed, ready to go. Now you'll notice there that we're using AirPlay. So the audio will also come through using AirPlay. So it means you can not only have your visuals that you've got here on your iPhone and now on the iPad at the same time, we can get the audio through as well, which is pretty darn cool. And once again, if we want to adjust these, we can just go to here and uh, drop the corner down on that one, grab the corner on this one and resize these to our heart's content. So when we're setting up a demonstration here, we can get things looking exactly the way we want to. Now there's a heap of other options here in Reflector 4, which I'll touch on briefly here, but you can definitely explore even more by checking out the website. If we click on the little reflector icon here, you can see we've got record options, we've got our video and our audio options. We've got the devices here, which we can remove and we can change some of the options on those. And then we have our global settings. So if we click on this one, we can go into check for new updates, get help and support, quit the application and go to our preferences. Let's take a quick look at the preferences now. Taking a look here from left to right, you can see we can change our broadcast name or just use the system name and you can change the behavior that when you hover over, we'll have the details down the bottom here. Your connection here. Now, this is important because depending on the Wi-Fi network that you have and the hardware that you're using, you may need to change some of these because the higher resolution, the more bandwidth is used and the more processing power. So if you've got a more modern computer, you can pump it up to 4K or 1080p. If you're finding that you're getting a little bit too much 
lag, just reduce the resolution and you're going to get a much smoother experience there. You can also change some of those uh, default scale modes there and some of those security. So if we don't want to have that on-screen code every time we connect, we can turn that off so it will connect immediately if we're on a secure network. We can then take a look at some of the recording options here, which I'll let you play around with if you want to record using the actual application. There's some director functions and student functions in here and you can choose what network it's going to use. Uh, now I'd make sure that you're using a Wi-Fi network that is going to be nice and fast and make sure that you're close to some of the gear that you're using because it's only going to be as good as your Wi-Fi network is reliable. Now I've really just scratched the surface on all the things that Reflector 4 can do. If you want more information, jump over to the webpage. It's linked down below. You can try it for free. And then if you like it, you can pick it up. It's $26 here in Australia, and it's under about $20 in most parts of the world or your currency equivalent. And if you want to see Reflector 4 in action, I use it almost every day here on Studio Live today in all of my live streams, my GarageBand tutorials, and a bunch of other videos. So if you want to see exactly what it can do in a real live setting, then make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out those videos. So whether you're an educator, a teacher, or just someone who wants to display their iPhone, iPad, or Android device screens to your Mac or your PC for recording or demonstration purposes, Reflector 4 is by far my favorite way to do this. Check out the details down in the link below, and I'll see you next time.